Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Welcome back to the show. We are so excited to have our next guest joining us. Yes, it's Jennifer Savage. She is back today and the founder and uh, owner of Savage Success Life Coaching. That's Savage Savage Success Life Coaching.com. Might as well know the website too and check in right there. We're going to talk to her today about, of course, all her life courses, whether she's helping you with your life, career, financial aspects, relationships, spiritual guidance. She does it all. So let me have the lady of the hour now introduce herself. Go ahead. <laughs> Thanks, Jill. Thanks so much. So, yes, I'm uh, Jennifer Savage. I started my practice. Uh, March of last year, I obtained my certifications as a life coach and a health coach. And my practice has definitely um, leaned into the life coaching. Uh, More specifically, it seems a lot of my clients are very interested in the career coaching. Uh, So it's, it's funny how it kind of organically went into that direction. So most of what I do relates to uh, attaining work-life harmony, because I say this all the time, there is no such thing as balance, like perfect balance in your life. If you try to um, strive for having perfect balance, you're probably going to burn yourself out. So that's why we kind of reframe it so that we're, we're looking for harmony by by. Um, giving ourselves grace um, to realize that at any particular time, we might have to focus more on one aspect of our life than others, be it career, be it family, whatever it is. Um, And that will give you the ability to accept that you have these multifaceted parts of your your life um, and to be able to give any individual or multiple areas the the, um, respect and the attention that they need at that time. Oh, beautiful. Well, you're here helping so many. And I know for today, you want to talk a little about finding your MOFA. And then people are going to say, what's MOFA? M-O-F-A. What is it? (laughs) Absolutely. So MOFA is the motivating factor. So that's one of the first things that we do um, when when I start coaching an individual with my program. We'll sit down, we'll have several conversations. And the first session, we really kind of delve into what why they're there and what it is that they really want to attain and also why why do they want to attain that you know and i think it's sometimes it's um easier to come in and tell somebody what you don't like about something like i do not like you know we'll just use an example i don't like my boss i don't like you know how i'm treated in work i don't like you know my particular job and all that so We try to, you know, absolutely honor all that and kind of just keep questioning and probing until it's like, well, what do you like? Like, what is it that you do like? And um, you're telling me what is not present at this particular time in your career and all that. And that's great. That gives us a starting point. But like, what is it that you want? Um, And the same thing with, you know, why, what brought you here? Like, what, what was the, the factor that got you through the door to, um, really, you know, get into coaching and get into, you know, I, uh, working through something. So it might be in the door, like, I just hate my job. Okay. I just, I want a different job. So if we stop there, then it's like, okay, well, I can help you with your resume. I can help you, you know, things like that, which, you know, are, are, are good tools to have, but we want to kind of figure out, okay, something has caused you to stop and say, I don't like my job. And, and, you know, we start there and say, okay, well, why don't you like your job? Well, I don't like my job because I don't feel valued because, you know, um, my boss doesn't understand, you know, they give me too much work. They don't understand me. Um, I feel like, you know, um, I'm not heard, those type of things. So then it's like, okay, well, what do you want? Well, I want I want to be creative. I want to have a job that fulfills me. I want to have, this is what we want to get to. I, I want to have a voice that I can use. So once we get to where they're they're able to um, come to their own decisions in their own minds of what it is that they actually do want out of their career per se, then it's like, well, what's going to motivate you to, to, to dig into this and to really, um, you know, go go to through 15 sessions of coaching, you know, 15 weeks of coaching, what's motivating you. And a lot of people might start with, you know, um, I feel like I'm letting people down by by not being fulfilled <clears throat> in my job. I feel like I'm, you know, 
I need to do this for my family. I need to, you know, I feel like I'm letting people down and work. Well, the, the important part is we can usually dig down deeper where it's like the personal reason. Like I want to feel good in my job. I want to feel like I'm making a difference in this world. I want to, you know, that's the motivating factor. It's, you know, there are other factors that, that will, you know, factor in, you know, to your, to your reasoning and to your decisions and all that. And it's never to be like, Oh, just be, you know, selfish and not consider anybody else. You do have to have, um, self-awareness and self-love because that's the whole thing once you get down to that you know you will be able then to be those things for other people but you need to be it for yourself first got it and the why behind the why and we need to identify our desires right absolutely absolutely and then once you do that you can come up with like i said that motivating factor the instinct might be for it's for other people and, and so that they see you a certain way or they feel about you a certain way. But really, truly, once we can get down to that, you know, that personal part of it, that motivation has to be something that you truly what your heart's desire, what you want for yourself. Um, that's that's the key. That's where we get the MOFA. <laughs> wow. I love it. I love MOFA. You taught me something new today. <laughs> awesome. Do you want to talk a little bit about, um, you know, honor, uh, you know, what is, as you say, appreciation and embrace what can be our desire? <laughs> yeah, that's absolutely. So that's, that's a huge part of it, too. Um, I think sometimes in life we get to where we're in our careers, you know, you, it, starting back from, from even, you know, the, your first career. You get into a job, you, you work at it, um, you know, you make progress up, you may change jobs, whatever it is, but you may get to a point where you feel like you stopped kind of um, exploring and um, embracing it and, and learning new things and all that. So that's a huge part of, of career coaching, of really, you know, life coaching in general, but career coaching. It's like, okay, again, it's easier to start off with, with what you don't like or what's not going well, but we want to always kind of rephrase it and reframe it so you're like what yeah. is it that i want what is it that really brings me joy that you know brings me that so we we actually do start off with an exercise i start off with that, an exercise with my clients where we'll kind of break down we could even start with the negative what don't you like about your job right now what's not going well and then it's like okay what in my career is going well mm -hmm. or what what can i what can i change or what can i do that will eliminate the, the parts that I don't like. So it's really, like I said, and, th and this is over the entire, you know, 15 weeks of the course, it's really honing in on, on your own personal desires um, and, you know, allow yourself to, to, to dream again and to be excited about your job and not just to kind of, you know, sometimes it feels like my clients come, by the time they come into coaching, they're feeling like, they're like living in this gray world where it's like almost like, okay, once they start to get their MOFA, once they start to identify their desires and all that, it's like almost like that, that old, you know, the Wizard of Oz movie when the Technicolor like turns yep, on. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> That's what I'm going to get to where it's like, they're not like just, you know, drudging through your life and all gray and, and all that where you're living in color again and you're, you know, you're able to, to find that in your career or your life. And it feels so good when that happens. But a lot of times in order to feel that vibrance, uh, that vibrant colors, a lot of us need to clear out the clutter. And we're talking physically, mentally, spiritually, I'm sure, right? All the above. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that ties into one of the first sessions that we have too. Um, what I'll usually do is kind of give like a little homework, person, you know, not, not exactly homework, but it is where we, we will talk about these different things that are desires, setting our MOFA, you know, identifying these things. But it's like, really look at your life right now. Um, and and we, we all fall into this where it's like, you, you know, you have clutter, you have you have all of these responsibilities and clutter and, and things that are just kind of taking up space in your in your mind and your soul and in your body, you know, whatever it is that until you can clear out some of that that you don't need anymore mm -hmm. um able to to bring in the new you won't you know there won't be room for the new 
So we definitely go through an exercise where you kind of look at different things. And you, you could even start with, say, I started personally when I was going through my certification. My first one, and it was for the career run, was cleaning out my email, <laughs> which is horrendous, which you know trying to get in touch with me through email. <laughs> but isn't it amazing, though? You feel so – it's so funny. I did that a while ago. I went through – I have like uh, uh, 40-something thousand emails, and I never clear them out. And it feels so good to see that delete button when it goes, you know, 1,000, 2,000. Ah, it, oh, it feels so good. I, now it's stacking I, up again. I got to get back into the swing of it. Absolutely. And, and that's the thing with me, too. And now I have like several email accounts, so I have to kind of keep up with, with the different accounts and all, too. But absolutely. And that, and that's just it, it's a, it could be a metaphor, but then it's also a real thing. It's like once you have that, you know, I, I'm starting a new career or I'm starting, you know, a new job or, or a new practice. And I, I want to, you know, get organized and set it up. If I have this old clunky, you know, spam filled email address where I'm trying to then build a business and have things at my fingertips that I need, yeah. it, it's all possible. So and that's just one example. There, there are other things too. I mean, anywhere that you're feeling clutter, it could even be people in your life. That sounds kind of harsh, but do you, are, are you surrounded by people that are just like not, nurturing you and, and helping you negative through- nancy's i call them and debbie downers uh yeah uh-huh absolutely, absolutely. and you know what it's, it's and it's like not to say it cut ties with everybody in your world but we all find ourselves in relationships and friendships and and work you know relationships and all where it's like they may, they may have served a purpose at one point you may have helped that particular person they may have helped you but if it's gotten to the point where you still have this energy around you, like you said, a Debbie Downer or something like that around you, that is not for you both. You're not in any way nurturing each other, helping each other. It may just be a, a part where you can just let go. You don't have to like call, break up with people and say, you're not, you're not my friend anymore or anything like that. It could just be cut those energy cords. Don't let that negativity that energy enter into your force you don't need it anymore and then you have room to invite in positive energy and new people into your life amazing well thank you for sharing this and by the way at this time let's remind everyone how we can contact you tell us about the website phone number social media pages and we'll continue to talk more about awesome so it's savage success life coaching at gmail.com is my email Savage Success Life Coaching.com is my website. Uh, my phone is 856 371 8185. And I'm still tweaking social media and all that. I do have a social media account, but I, I, the best right now is to go to my website um, and to, to reach out to set up a, a breakthrough session, is what we call the, con- the initial consultation to see if, you know, my particular coaching is the right fit for you and we're the right fit for each other. Uh, the best is to reach out through email or through phone and we can set up that consultation. Perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, so let's continue on clearing the clutter for a second, right? Because you mentioned, you know, it, it is the physical clutter that also, uh, uh, you know, hinders our mental capacity. Because like I know I have a lot of clutter in my home and I try to get to it and sometimes I do and I feel great, but then it just piles up all the mail on the steps and then the children's clothes and it weighs on me. The moment it gets done, I feel a sense of relief. I feel, I, I, it makes me feel so good until it starts happening again. Any, um, any, any advice on how you stop the clutter? <laughs> that's, that's an amazing question. It really is. And that's what I do help my clients do. First step is identifying it. I, I love the examples that you just gave. I think that we can all relate to that because there are certain things that you have. Um, I know when, when my sons were still in the house, it would be like shoes. There would be shoes all over the front of my house. <laughs> I'm like, did you just put them in your room? You know, can we keep one pair of shoes down by the front door? That kind of thing, like goofy stuff. But like you said, it's like when you feel that where it's just, it, it weighs down on you. So I think number one step is to identify what, what are, you know, you can identify all, but even start with like two or three things that are, you feel are cluttering or are interrupting your energy flow of some way, be it physical or mental or whatever it is, and start there and look at them and say, what can I do today? What can I do next week? What can I start to do? So it's it's not to get overwhelmed and just be like, 
oh my God, my house is just like a holy mess. I, I can't, I, where, do, where do I even start? It's like with anything that you want to accomplish in your life, you know, you can evaluate it big picture and then make a list if, if that if you're a list person like I am, uh, or just mentally kind of think of, um, yeah. you know, the top things that come to mind and then break it down and be like, okay, well, the clutter, the, the mail, you know, that's one thing we can start with, you know, as I grab my mail and walk through my front door, instead of putting it on the step or putting it on my desk or where I usually put it to get to it when I have time, um, you know, there's several ways you can handle it. Now, if you have, you know, young children that you're walking through the door and you have to take care of their needs first, absolutely. That makes sense that you would put it down. Um, but is there a way that you can address it right away? Even just do that first skim through and be like, well, this is trash. This is trash. This is trash. Toss that in the trash. And then just put the important things in a spot where you know that you will get to it and set a time each day, week, whatever, whatever works for you and be like, okay, well, here is my, I'm a bin person. Here's my bin for my mail. We're going to put it here. The important mail, not, you know, I threw away all the, the junk mail that, that I could identify first glance let me start here and then, you know, say Wednesday evenings. I know that, you know, I have time. I have a half an hour where I can go through my mail. Um, I'm going to put it right there and I will open it and address it. And same thing, trash what you don't need or, or what you've accomplished. File it as soon as you do it. That's my other thing. I'll take care of it and all that. I'll even put a little note like, you know, paid this bill, whatever. Um, but then it'll sit in another pile until I file it. Let me just do it right away. So. Yeah, it's the same kind of thing. It's just taking it um, big chunks and, and that, you know, big, big, overwhelming things and then chunking it down into more manageable pieces until you feel like you're more in control. Then you can move on to the next thing when you feel that you're you're ready for that. Got it. And how important is exercise? Uh, exercise is huge for, for me personally, but then also I know for my clients too, it seems to... Be a hugely important thing. I, I know for myself that when I'm moving, especially because I'm so sedentary in my everyday life, in, in my job, um, behind a computer almost the, the whole time. So I need that time to move my body. I need that time to um, really just clear my mind because it's very much associated um, you know, your mental, your physical, and even spiritual. So for me, exercise can be, you know, going to the gym. It could be, you know, having, you know, lifting weights at some point. It could be doing a, a, a Zumba class. It could be like a physical activity like that. But even more important to me is to build in as much time as I can to take a walk, uh, to get outside, to clear my head, to feel, you know, some sunshine, to, uh, you know, yeah. connect with nature, those things. Because once I can do that, then I can you know, it helps me physically, it'll help with my weight, it'll help with my stress and all that. But it, you know, it helps me mentally too, because it'll clear out the cobwebs. It, it helps me to, to focus on the here and now, the present moment. And and this is why I, I suggest to my clients, find what works for you. Like I said, it, it, you could be a hardcore, I want to do, you know, you know, workouts, I want to, I want to, you know, sweat, I want to be at a gym, I want to be ripped, yeah. I wanna, you know, that's great. And that, if that works for you, that's perfect. And you may find that, that like sweet spot right in there. Um, it may be, you're like, I can't, you know, I have bad knees. I can't do all that. So yeah. So is walking good for you? Is swimming is, you know, find what, uh, well, one exercise that we do in the coaching. And I love this one. I just thought of it is that I asked my clients, what did you do as a child? Like when you went out to play, like what, 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 brought you joy what physical activity was oh riding gosh bike? yeah it was riding bikes it was playing kickball it was huh? even in the winter hiding like the fluorescent uh, pink or yellow glove in the snow and having to find it see those things sp spark such great memories oh. yep that is so cool so that's the kind of thing you're like okay now if it's in the summer and you can't throw your fluorescent glove that's okay but in the winter yeah why not you know like play with if you have kids play with your kids or you know, even just do it on your own, but try to find activities that you can do. And then you're like, why haven't I ridden a bike in so long? You know, why haven't I played in the snow? Why haven't I done whatever? So 
exercise doesn't have to be another thing that we have to do. Like, you know, I have to take my vitamins. I have to, you know, not, not to negate that I take vitamins, but it's not like I have to, you know, yeah, I know. I get it. (laughs) You want to, you want to keep that essence of playing in there and, and, and moving your body because it brings you joy, be it dance, be it whatever. So yeah, it's important that, and again, it's a personal thing. It's going to be different for everybody, probably. Great. And unfortunately, we are out of time. So let's remind everyone how we could reach you. Great conversation today. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, so, yes, my uh, website is savagesuccess.com. Um, no, it's not. Savagesuccesslifecoaching.com. Got it. Uh, email is savagesuccesslifecoaching at gmail.com. And my cell is 856-371-8185. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Pleasure having you back as always. And great to see you here on the Zoomcast today too. Yeah, it was great. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jennifer. We'll talk next week. Bye-bye. Are you struggling to maintain balance in all aspects of your life? Hi, my name is Jennifer Savage, and I'm the founder and CEO of Savage Success Life Coaching. I help my clients to attain work-life harmony by creating clarity. I offer quick start wellness programs and 90-day life coaching programs in work-life harmony, maintaining healthy relationships, and more. Contact me at savagesuccesslifecoaching at gmail.com and let's get started today. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Adopt US Kids presents Multiple Choice Parenting. Your daughter just had her first breakup. Do you A, put yourself in her shoes? How could he do this to you? And for Sheila, she, she has split ends. B, console her. Oh, sweetie, this is going to happen a lot. Four, maybe five more times before you get married. C, take charge. Got to get this all straightened out. Keep a little talking to, man to man, mano a mano. Hey, Steve. It's now a good time? No? Okay, no problem. Bye. Or D, help her find a new boyfriend. I know a great place to meet boys. The internet. Nice, single, boys. Never mind. How about some ice cream? As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. For more information on how you can adopt, visit AdoptUSKids.org. A public service announcement from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt U.S. Kids, and the Ad Council.